All right, so now that we extracted the file, the last part of it will, to complete the machine learning pipeline will be to analyze our data. So to do that, I've already opened up Weka here. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on open. I'm going to select um, all files. And then I'm going to navigate to the desktop, which is where I have what we just did. I have the PCAP converter, that, that's what we were doing. And this was label feature IoT CSV was my um, feature vectors. So we took the PCAP files, five classes, and then we have this file. So I open it and you can see it here. Here it is on Weka. We have um, a lot of information that's very valuable, right? So we can, Weka tells us that we have 13,138 instances. Uh, we have nine attributes, which include the label. So there's basically 18 features. So we can analyze statistics about the data just by you know, clicking on all the individual ones. Notice this is the label. And if we click on the label, we can see TCP miscellaneous, camera assistant, outlet mobile. It actually gives us a histogram of the count. So it seems like this is an imbalanced data set, right? There's very few of the mobile category and there's a lot of the camera. So there's a lot of cameras, uh, not that many and then assistance is like 2,000, so it's the second highest. All right, and so that's it. This is our, you know, we went from raw data to a, a, a file in the vector space model that can go and can fit into uh, Weka, sklearn, and TensorFlow. The last part then is we want to do the classification. Um, the labels, notice that the key thing is to check everything else can be numeric or nominal, but it's important to check that the label is actually uh, nominal. So in this case, you can see that here it is nominal. So that means that it's a classification problem with five classes, at least according to Weka. So now I'm going to hit click on the classify tab and I can go ahead and select a couple of algorithms. So I'm going to go to naive base. Now, before I do that, though, I need to select the label. Right. And so I'm going to go here on the drop down and make sure I click on label to tell it that that's the target that we're trying to predict. And now the classifier should be highlighted so i'm going to click on base select naive base for instance and i'm just going to do like you know a percentage split so i'm going to do like 70 percent split hit start and there you go right so i ran my naive base algorithm and now i have my data so you can see here the act the we have the metrics precision recall and f measure and the f measure is really good actually for some of these not so good for uh, the miscellaneous category so the miscellaneous category does not seem to be uh, very very good here so you can see uh, miscellaneous is 56.3 uh, and then we have for the F measure so the F measure for miscellaneous is one of the worst also for mobile is not great but it's really good for camera assistant and outlet. All right, so as you can see, unlike the other problems that we've done before, right, where we did like iris and MNIST and it was always 100% for everything almost, here this is a more realistic data set. As we can see the, with the previous data sets, iris and MNIST, you know, it was very academic problems that were very easy. This is a more realistic problem and it basically, you know, you can see that it doesn't do well, actually, if you want to be honest. It's not, it doesn't do well for mobile. Uh, it doesn't do that well for miscellaneous. But it seems to be good at predicting, like, uh, for camera, assistant. And overall, though, notice that here's another point that I want to stress. Overall, the precision, the recall, and the F measure F measures are above 90%. And so what does that mean? How do you interpret that? So this is an important concept. It's, it's because it's a little bit misleading, right? So if you look at just the overall, you say, oh, it does 90%. And so everyone's happy and you know everyone thinks everything did great. But actually, it's nine, over 90% for those metrics, precision, recall, and F measure, but overall only. Once you start digging into the specific devices, then you see that three devices, it seems to do really well, and then two devices, it doesn't do that well. And so 
That's why when you do your analysis, you actually have to dig in a little bit deeper. And that's why it's not enough just to look at the overall, but you should also look at the individual things. Now, remember that naive base, you know, if you want to remember, go back to the lecture on naive base, it's only a baseline algorithm. It's meant to be really fast and it's meant to be, you know, the worst performance. So hopefully other algorithms will do better. Now, additionally, we should look at the a confusion matrix here and we can see that in the confusion matrix, maybe we should select like miscellaneous. You can see that miscellaneous is actually out of um, 382 or the test set, whatever it is, I don't have the number, out of the test set, it only correctly classified 182. And there's 11, 59, and 18 samples that were incorrectly classified. So that is to say, you know, it took all the samples, only 182 it recognizes miscellaneous, the rest it recognizes other things. For instance, it get it confuses miscellaneous with class C which is assistant. So sometimes um, you may have some devices, these miscellaneous devices that may be acting a little bit like assistants and so the algorithm was not able to pick that up. That's why the confusion matrix is really important. Now another thing here is in the camera for instance. So the majority of the, of the camera were correctly classified and there were only two misclassifications A and C. So it thought that cameras could be miscellaneous or they could be assistants right and then down here for instance uh, we have one example of com of no misclassification so look at d so in d outlet is correct all outlet examples or samples are correctly classified as outlet d and there were zero 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 and zero misclassifications all right so this is a very important point all right now let's try another algorithm one more so i'm going to do decision trees so i'm going to go to trees and i'm going to select j48 still the same label still 70 percent split i'm going to apply it yes now if we look at the output from decision trees we were lucky that it ran we can see that it does much better so decision trees actually gets almost perfect Precision, you know, 100% or above 90. Recall the same, F measure the same. So the decision tree algorithm has certainly done much better than the naive base algorithm. And we see this here. Look at this diagonal, it's practically perfect. There's only two misclassifications here and four misclassifications here. And so this is a great example, actually, of a more realistic data set. Right, so we had overall it's good, although it's not very good at predicting two classes. We also saw examples of how this data set is much larger. We have start to run into big data memory issues. And then also we saw that naive base is fast, doesn't require that much memory, but it's not that great. Whereas decision tree did almost perfectly for our test set. The last thing I wanna show is the select attributes option. So here the question might be, okay, you know, as a cybersecurity professional, I'm interested in knowing, you know, what features were the most important in determining what type of IoT device this was. And so to do that, I go to select attributes, click on choose, I'm going to select ranker, click on yes, it selects information gain, which is the method that it's going to use. Then I'm going to say, use the full train set. I'm going to also specify that the label, the target, and then I'm gonna run. So to predict that, I'm gonna hit start. And now it gives me a list of the most important features. All right, so that's a list of the most important features. So I can also do cross validation, repeat this. I'm just going to select the predict label, right? with ranker and information gain. I'm gonna hit start, wait for it, and this is going to give me a list of the ranked features. Of the 19 uh, features in the feature vector, I now have an ordered list that tells me basically, I have an ordered list that tells me basically which ones are the most important. So obviously it, it, it ranks them from most important to least important. 
So actually here it's saying these last three are unimportant. So because they have a zero value. So protocol, IP header length and TCP urgent pointer are actually unimportant. Now that makes sense because protocol is what? Protocol is six and it means it's TCP and all packets were TCP. And so obviously when everything is the same, you know, that doesn't tell you anything about differences, right? Remember that what machine learning looks for is the differences between the values of a feature. And so all the values, the value was six for this field, right? For protocol, it was all six for all packets. And so it's basically saying here, you know what? It's zero contribution, get rid of it. Now we can also look at the top, let's say five or six features. And we can see that according to this, the source port is actually the most important feature to determine uh, if you know what type of IoT device this is, that is followed by the TCP checksum, window size, IP checksum, and so on. You know, sequence number, act number until here. So you know that's pretty pretty interesting and pretty useful. So at this point, a you know a cybersecurity professional might actually start digging in into the why of this, right? So start looking at the network, start to understand you know, certain uh, aspects that, you know, uh, you know, the definitions of why, you know, act number and sequence number. Why are those contributing features? So, you know, when my students did this, they had this theory, right, that, you know, sequence number and act number should be uh, random numbers, right, in theory, but t uh, sequence numbers and act numbers are dependent on the size of the um, or the amount of data that has been transmitted right so the amount of data that you send from one point to the other so you send a lot and the sequence number might grow or or so you know the next sequence number might be a bigger number so so usually it's like you have this sequence number the next sequence number is the previous one plus the length of the amount of data sent so they were yeah, maybe you know as they're brainstorming uh, you might say, oh, it's because a camera sends a lot of data because it's, you know, images. Whereas something else, like a power outlet, is just sending very little data, something about its status, etc. And so, you know, this is where you start to make theories about what's going on. And this might be very useful for uh, cybersecurity professionals. So anyway, in conclusion here, we looked at the selected attributes tab. And we ran two algorithms, naive Bayes and decision trees. We saw the decision trees did really well for the classification. Then on the selected attributes, we ran ranker. And with information gain, it ranked all the features from most important to least important. We saw that protocol is not important. And we saw that the most important features seem to be source port and TCP checksum. That basically completes the analysis in Weka. All right, so in summary, this was the IoT device detection lab. So Internet of Things. So we went through a more realistic uh, data set, right? So more real realistic data set. We saw many issues related to a more realistic data set, right? So we saw issues of big data. We saw how to convert, take raw data, and convert it to the vector space model. Right, so we saw that. And then we saw basically a complete pipeline on ML, which included you know, feature extraction and the analysis via Weka. Right, to the point where we could draw some conclusions, etc. cetera. So uh, you know, this is a, a very important thing you know, as a system administrator. You might want to identify what are the Internet of Things devices that are being connected to your network because, as we all know, these Internet of Things devices are fairly new, which means that they're not as robust in their software. So the software assurance uh, might not be there. They might be subject to vulnerabilities. And therefore, the first step would be to identify these devices. So the goal was to build a machine learning algorithm that just based on the packets, you know, what are the features that we need to look for in a packet that can allow us to detect if this is a IoT device, for instance. So in, in our particular case, we weren't classifying between 
IoT and non-IoT, where we were more classifying among five IoT devices, right? So, but if you wanted to extend this to say as a project for your course, you could take the, the, the data that I provided, right? And then just extract all the packets that were IoT related versus all the other ones and build a two class problem, IoT, non-IoT. And it should be pretty similar to what we did, the code and everything. So uh, that concludes this lab. So that, you know, so that's the end of this lab. Thank you.